Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new set, Tree Before and Afters, and its coordinating dies. So let's go ahead and check it out. So first here we have our winter tree. Then we have our cute spring tree. A summery tree or a fall tree, depending on how you color it. And then a fall tree with the leaves down on the ground. We also have some cute things for helping to set the scene. So we've got an apple, a butterfly, an individual flower, an individual leaf. We have hearts in two sizes and some cute little snowflakes in a trio pattern and then some snowflakes on their own. We have wind trails that are perfect for either the snowflakes or the fall leaves. And we have a bunch of different smiley faces. We've got the sunglasses one for summer, a general smiley face, a teeth chattering smiley face for winter, a different style of smiley, and then more of like a winky little one. We also have some rosy cheeks that you can stamp on their faces or not. And then we have some great sentiments. So we have happy and then we have all of the different seasons. So we had fall, spring, summer, and winter. Then we have some other phrases. So we have sending warm wishes, thankful for you, here's to a fruitful year, I'll never stop, falling for you. I love that one. <laughs> We've got may your year be filled or may your day bloom with happiness. We also have an exclamation point that you can add to the ends of the phrases. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those cute little smiley faces in all of the trees. My teeth chattering face is just the cutest. And then we're going to be using some Copic markers to add some color to these fun images. And we're gonna be using different shades of brown depending on what season the tree is in. And I really like these E40s for both the winter tree and the fall tree. This is a before and after set, which means it works great on its own, but it also works really great with the Magic Picture Changer, one of my favorite interactive dies, and it works awesome with the Flippin' Awesome die, which is our brand new interactive die that is quickly becoming one of my favorites. And we're gonna link the intro video to Flippin' Awesome in the description below so that you guys can check that out. So now we're gonna add some color to those fall leaves with reds, oranges, yellows, and greens. And in that tree to the left there, you can color the leaves in those same colors for a fall look or in more springy colors for a springy or summery look. Now with our tree with the flowers, we're gonna be coloring that in in a different shade of brown. You can see how cool that difference is. I try to not blend out my trees too much because I actually really, really like that kind of streaky look on the trees because it makes it look like the wood grain of the trunk. So now we're going to be doing some E50s for this more summery tree. So I love that you can mix and match these just depending on what look you're going for. Now for this summery tree, we're going to be doing a mix of greens and yellows. And Kristen here in the office did this. And I thought it was so pretty to have the yellows in that summery tree. It almost makes it feel like a lemon tree. We're also gonna be taking those nice bright greens and then some darker greens and mixing and matching those colors on both our flowered tree and then our more standard tree there. And I love the two different shades of green. It really gives it a lot of texture. And there's that yellow we were talking about earlier. One of the things that I really love about this set is that you can do it for year round cards. So you could just use your winter trees to help fill your scene or just your fall, spring, or summer. They're really great for mixing and matching with other sets to help create the backgrounds on your cards as well. So I love that this set is great for fall and winter, but it's going to be great when we go back into spring and summer. So these are the coordinating dies which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to take that die and line it up with our stamped image, hold it in place with some low tack tape and run that through the die cut machine and now we have these really cute little trees all cut out. And now here is a look how you can take all of the little extra accessories and help fill in your scene. So we can add snowflakes around the tree, the butterfly flying around. You can even put the hearts in the tree, which is really, really cute. Or you can even layer something like the apple in the tree too, which I think is really adorable. We're making three cards in this video and we're gonna start off with a magic picture changer. And if you've never made a magic picture changer before, make sure to check out the intro video. We're gonna link it in the description below. We've gone ahead and stamped out our tree with the leaves and now we're gonna do the one with the fall leaves at the bottom. And then we're stamping a bunch of individual leaves kind of floating around the tree, which is gonna look super, super cool. And also those cool little trails too to show the movement of those leaves in the air. 
Then we're going to add some color with our Copic markers just like we did earlier, creating a fall tree on the left and then where the leaves have all fallen on the right. Now for our ground and sky, we're going to be using our Copic markers to create that too. So I'm just creating a line with my green marker and then I'm going to fill in that whole area. We'll then repeat the same thing on the other side because I want the ground and the sky to remain the same. The only difference that I'm going to do is on the one with the leaves all down in the ground, I'm gonna take a little light brown marker and just make some streaks in the ground. And you'll see that kind of gives it a little bit more of a fall look from the other tree. To fill in the sky, we're gonna be using BG11 and BG10 and just coloring carefully around the tree and filling that in. So you see how pretty that's looking and we're gonna repeat that again on the tree that has all its leaves on it still. Next, we're gonna take our magic picture changer and we're gonna look through that viewfinder window and perfectly center in our trees. Once we have those in perfect placement, we can take some low tack tape, I'm using post-it note tape here, and we're gonna hold those pieces in place. We'll run that through our die cut machine and then we're gonna have both of our pieces ready to go to start creating our magic picture changer. So first we're gonna be working with our bigger main pocket piece. And the die has created some score lines for us, about in the middle of the die and then also on the outsides creating two skinny tabs. And those are the ones we're gonna work with first. So we're gonna be folding along those score lines creating two tabs folding into the inside of this piece. I always like to start in the center and then gently work my way to the outside. And then after that, I can go ahead and crease it nice and well there. Now we're gonna use some double-sided tape and we're gonna be putting tape on the inside of both of the tabs and the outside of both of the tabs for a total of four pieces of tape. Then we can flip our piece over looking on the inside of it again and we're gonna peel up the liner paper on both of the tabs and fold those tabs down securing them in place. This is going to become the track for our moving piece. Next, we're gonna take our powder tool and we're gonna run this all over both of the pieces. This powder is gonna help reduce the friction between the two pieces when they move together, which is gonna create a really nice, smooth slide. So I love using this. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a little baby powder and a paintbrush and that works perfectly too. So we're folding along the center score line and now we can start to put our pieces together. So we're gonna open up our main pocket piece and then take our moving piece and insert the tab into that slot in the center. Then we're gonna look at our four openings here and then our four tabs that are on the main piece. And we're going to weave in those tabs, almost like a little basket weave. So the first slot gets the first tab then the second slot gets the second tab, third, third, and fourth, and fourth. Repeat that one more time. We're gonna insert the moving piece into the slot and then we're gonna take those tabs and line them up with the slot. So the first tab with the first slot, second with second, third with third, and fourth with fourth. And then we can work on closing our pocket. So we're gonna open it up and we're gonna make sure that moving piece is exactly between those two pieces of tape. We don't want it to be touching that tape because we wanna make sure that it's going to move freely. Once we know that that piece is in the center, we can remove the liner paper on both of those tabs and then we can close our whole piece like a book and that's gonna attach the entire thing together. Once we have that attached, you're gonna see that we have that magic picture change happening. It's so cool. So now it's time to start decorating and we're gonna take out our fall fling paper, which is perfect for this fall themed card. And we're gonna take that really pretty orange floral print and we're going to die cut that with the magic picture changer add-on. Next, we're gonna stamp out the happy fall sentiment from the set in some walnut ink. And then we can work on attaching this. So to attach this, you're gonna to wanna to put your tape from corner to corner on all four corners and then just on the short sides. We don't wanna put tape on the long sides cause that may get in the way of the action of the magic picture changer. Then we can layer that right on top and it's gonna beautifully decorate and frame our cute little fall scene. So next we need to work on our tab. And I cut that out of some white paper and that white was looking a little bit stark for something like a fall card. So I decided to go ahead and take that Magic Picture Changer moving piece and cut that from some of the new speckled eggshell paper which is more of a cream paper. So we're gonna take that die there and line that up with that paper, run it through the die cut machine and then just trim off any of the excess. We can then add some tape runner to it and you can actually layer it right on top of the white piece to color it in. So you can do that at any time with pattern paper or anything and it looks really pretty. 
Then earlier you saw we cut one of the tabs from the set from some of that fall fling paper that coordinates so nicely and we're going to layer that tab on. Now this tab is not only informative because it has the arrow that lets the recipient know what to do, but it's also functional and that it creates a stopper so that you don't end up pushing your whole moving piece all the way through the card. So you can see just how cool that's looking. Now here is some wood grain cardstock and I'm taking the new sugar cookie ink and just blending it on the edges. You can see how beautiful that looks because it really makes the wood grain texture pop and I really liked the paper being a little bit darker. When it first starts off the ink looks a little bit darker and then when it dries it's just a nice subtle little aging effect that's perfect for fall. Next, I've taken a wavy sentiment banner there and we've die cut that out of some of that same speckled eggshell paper and we're gonna be stamping thankful for you on there, but we need to curve it to match. So I've got the die cut side face up. I'm gonna layer my block right on it and I'm gonna use that as a guide as to how to curve my stamp. So I can curve the top part up and the bottom part down and attach it right to the block. You'll see that this is the perfect visual guide because when you turn it over, it fits that banner just awesome. So we're gonna stamp that out in some walnut ink and then stamp two cute little hearts on either side. And this was a, an adorable idea by Jen. So thank you so much, Jen, for that cute idea. I love that banner filled in with the hearts on either side. So now we can add some foam squares to the back of the banner and layer that on the bottom. And I love the thankful for you sentiment with the happy fall. I just think it's so sweet. Next, we're gonna take our wood grain cardstock and layer that onto a card base. And then we can layer our whole magic picture changer piece on top of that. And I always like to do that with foam squares because then it's a little bit easier for the recipient to be able to grab the tab and move the card. And now our card is all done and this interactive look is so cool. I love the change from a fall tree to all of the leaves falling. You could also do from the flowers to without the flowers or even the springtime tree to the winter tree. You could really mess around and play with this and come up with some really cute looks. You could also change the paper on your card and the color of your background too. And so here is another example with a similar idea but a totally different look. So this is a look at the tree before and afters in a magic picture changer. And here's a look at the tree before and afters in the brand new flippin' awesome die. How cool is that? As you pull the tab, all of the different seasons change. It's so cute and sweet. And I love that the flippin' awesome fits a gift card too. So if you guys wanna check out the video for this, make sure to look in the description below and we'll link it down there. It's the intro to flippin' awesome video. Now that we've made some interactive cards with this, it's time to make just a normal card with this. So in this case, we're going to be using the brand new Crunchy Leaf ink. And Crunchy Leaf is an alcohol marker friendly ink, just like Jet Black, but in a brown color. And I thought these trees would look so beautiful, colored in with Copic markers with a softer look with the brown ink. So that's what we've done here. And I wanted to show you guys a little comparison of the coloring between the two. We've colored these trees in the exact same way with the exact same markers, but I love that the brown ink just gives it a softer, more kind of storybook look, and that's what this card is gonna have a more softer background than the other card that we did earlier, and I just really, really like it. And here's a comparison between the two. Both look awesome, it just depends on what look you're going for. So we're gonna go ahead and die cut that tree out, and we're gonna be cutting out four of these trees in the softer brown color, and there you can see one in the black ink, so you can kinda of see the comparison between all of them. And then we're gonna take some jet black ink just to stamp the smiley faces, because I wanted to make sure the smiley faces were nice and bold. To help set the scene, we're gonna die cut a stitched hillside backdrop in the portrait style out of some of that spiffy speckles paper that makes for such a beautiful ground. We're also gonna die cut a couple more hills with the stitched hillside border so that we can layer even more into this backdrop scene. To take this springy paper into more of a fall look, we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending. So first we're going to take the celery stick ink just to help darken up the hills a little bit. And we're going to be using a blender brush and I'm just putting a piece of white cardstock there to protect the other hill. And we're gonna start off of the hill and then move on to the hill, just adding a little bit of color at the top to almost make it look like we ink blended the entire background. Then we can repeat the same thing for the back hill and the other two hills that we have. Now I wanted it to have an even more kind of darker fall look. So we're gonna take artichoke, which is kind of like an olivey green color that's gonna match those green leaves that we colored earlier. And we're gonna blend that onto all the tops of the hills as well. And you can see how that's giving it a little bit more of a fall, kind of darker, warmer look. 
For the sky, we're going to ink blend on some Minty Fresh and Merman ink, and I love those two colors together. But I wasn't sure exactly where I needed to ink blend, so I thought I'd better add these hills to my scene so I know where exactly my sky needs to go. So we're just adding some tape runner to the top of the hill and then visually looking to see how it's going to look nice to layer that on there. And I love the look of rolling hills. It's just so beautiful. So now we're going to pick up our merman ink and just kind of put that in the center of the card and that's going to be going behind one of our trees so it'll kind of make it look like that tree is almost glowing. And then we can after that start to layer some of the minty fresh ink just to fill in the rest of the sky but keep it lighter than that whole merman area. To create some texture in the sky, we're gonna take Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. We're gonna spread that out on acrylic block and then just use a spray bottle filled with some plain water and just add a little bit to that. We'll take a paintbrush and mix this all together. And this is gonna give us some water with kind of a little bit of that white pigment ink in it. We'll pick it up with a paintbrush and then tap the paintbrush to create splatters. The water is going to react with the ink and the white ink is gonna make those spots even more bold. So I think it looks really, really pretty. I really like that. I'm gonna try that a lot from now on. We'll add some foam squares to the back of that whole hill piece and then layer that onto the sky. And I think it's looking so pretty. So next we're gonna take out that fall fling paper and we're gonna be using the Shari paper, which is one of my favorite papers, it's so pretty. And we are going to die cut the largest stitched rectangle frame. Then we can add some liquid glue to the back of it and layer that on. And oh my goodness, once you layer this on there, it just makes the whole card, it just looks so beautiful. I think it'd be pretty even without the trees in it. It's just so stunning. Next, we're gonna start layering our trees and our apples into the scene. And those have all been stamped with that crunchy leaf ink. And so I'm just kind of placing them around to see where they're gonna go and then layering the apples onto the trees, which is such a cute look. And today I am recreating a card by Elena. So thank you so much, Elena, for letting me recreate this awesome card. So we're gonna layer all of our cute apples around the trees and also in the trees, which I think is a really cute look. You can do that with the individual flowers or even with the little hearts would be so sweet for Valentine's Day. So I'm adding a bunch of apples. And at this point, it was like just too many apples. <laughs> so I started to peel some of them off to just kind of make the scene a little bit simpler. With that pattern paper frame around there, I thought all of those apples were kind of competing with it. So I've taken some apples away. We're going to tuck some behind the hills, which I think is a really, really cute look. I ended up having a couple of extra apples, so I figured, hey, why not? I'm going to put them on the inside of my card base. So we're going to layer this whole piece on a standard size card that's five and a half by four and a quarter, and then we can take our cute apples and stick them on the inside. Last but not least, we need our sentiment. So we're gonna stamp that out in the same crunchy leaf ink so it all coordinates. And we're gonna stamp out here's to a fruitful year, which I think is really cute with the apples because it's perfect for the start of the school year. We're gonna die cut that with a sentiment banner and then trim off the end of it, add some tape runner and then layer it into the scene tucked into the frame so it looks like it's coming right out of it. And our card is all done. I love that softer, crunchy leaf ink, how we layered the apples into the tree and how that we used one style of tree in a card to create a really, really cool scene. And next up, we're going to be using all of the styles of trees on a card and I can't wait to do that. We're going to be making a four seasons card using the four square backdrop in the landscape orientation. We're going to be die cutting this backdrop from some wood grain cardstock, just like we used on the card at the beginning. And you'll see that the die not only creates this really cool frame, but it also creates the inside pieces of the frame too. And we're going to be using that to die cut some spiffy speckles papers in four different colors to go along with our four seasons. So you'll see how cool that is because it has the stitch detail and it fits perfectly in that cool little rectangular window. Once we have our four colors for winter, spring, summer, and fall, we're gonna go ahead and cut some grounds. So we'll use those same rectangular pieces from the four square backdrop to cut a ground, and then we're gonna use the simple stitch till side border to cut the curve. That way it's gonna have that beautiful stitch detail, and it'll have the beautiful stitch detail of the little hill for the trees to stand on. And we're gonna be repeating this with a bunch of different papers. So we've got some fall fling paper in that beautiful kind of apricot color with the pattern and then the orange color with the leaf. We have some pixie dust sparkle paper and also some more of that spiffy speckles paper for the ground for the uh, summer tree. 
Then we can start to work on layering everything. So we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll use some glue tube liquid glue to layer that frame on. And then we can add some liquid glue to each of those rectangular openings and start dropping everything in. And I love this inlaid die cut look, it's so pretty. For our hills, we're gonna add some foam tape to the back and then layer those onto each of the cute little tiny scenes, which are so adorable and perfect for this whole Four Seasons theme. And we're gonna be stamping out, may your year be filled with happiness, which is such a sweet sentiment, onto a sentiment banner die that we die cut out of some white cardstock. Add some foam tape to the back and layer that right in the center, which is such a cool look with having the four trees surrounding it. Next, we can take each of the trees and layer them into their individual scenes. And I don't know about you guys, but I keep singing that Carol King song, You've Got a Friend, over and over again when I look at this stamp set, winter, spring, summer, or fall. So now that we've got these layered on there, we're gonna do a little bit of stamping to help fill in the scenes. So we're gonna take those little swirlies that are in the stamp set and stamp those out around the fall tree. And then we'll take the snowflakes and stamp those around the winter tree. Then to spice up these trees, we're gonna give them some cute little smiley faces. So I absolutely love with the one with the shades for the summer tree. And then we've got the little kind of winky guy for the fall tree, the teeth chatterer for winter, and then another little plain smiley one for the one for spring. And this card is so cute and quick and easy to do. And it'd be easy to mass produce a bunch of these too. It's just so sweet. Next, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team, and this card by Elena is the one that inspired us to make our card today. Here, I love how Elise used the peekaboo backdrop to create a really cute Four Seasons card. Megan created a magic picture changer with a cute spring theme, and when you pull, the flowers turn to apples, which is just so sweet and adorable. I love this card by Leticia. That beautiful ink blended background and that cute twine bow are just so awesome. And this card by Kristen is adorable. I love the happy anniversary theme with the two trees. It's so sweet. Here I love how Audrey used that winter tree and put it with some of our cute little snowmen. These tree are perfect for helping set scenes. And this card by Kara is so gorgeous. She used that crunchy leaf ink and I love the cute little scenes with her bear. Mindy created such a happy card using the four square backdrop portrait that I just love. And then Kristen created a magic picture changer with a more springy summery birthday theme. And when you pull, the tree gets flowers and some shades, which is just adorable. This card by Elise is amazing. I love how she cut the circles to highlight her trees and those cool little stitch details are just stunning. Here Kristen created a pivot pop-up card and when you open it you get this gorgeous winter scene that I just adore. I love the ink blended backgrounds in Elise's four square backdrop card, so super cute. And then here Megan has an amazing magic picture changer with this really cute scene she created with the Screen Time Kids. It's the most perfect fall scene, especially when you pull and you get those cute little apples onto the tree. Here we have an amazing flippin' awesome card by Maureen, and you can see how she used these trees combined with one of our village sets to mix and match them to create the most perfect little scenes. And here we have another flippin' awesome card that's so cute because it uses the tree before and afters to create this really cool seasons changing interactive card. So I can't wait to see what you guys create with tree before and afters and all the awesome cards and interactive cards you're gonna make. So make sure to share them with us. If you guys wanna check out some more videos, you can click right here to see them. You can also click to subscribe and also click to learn more at lawnfawn.com. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.